we're going to be getting into this game here on the top left hand side of Odyssey Ladder Edition and the Terran Trunks. It's Rio. And in the bottom right, he wants to win this money so bad, he's not even going to wait for you to plug getting the money. He is already on his way with a Proxy Stargate. It is classic. Proxy Stargate. We said he was going to mix it up. He kind of did. He likes going Stargate. Not that unusual. I think the unusual part is he didn't build a base, right? Right. Well, as a player that has done Proxy Stargate a lot in PvT, uh -huh. uh, this is a really, really thin build mm -hmm. in that the Terran has to respond very correctly. Okay. And already you're seeing that, like, Ryung is responding, but he's not responding correctly. He's got the bunker on the low ground, but really is what's going to be in danger is he has no Widow Mine. This Oracle's halfway done being chrono boosted. Like, Creature four Marines. Brother. Yeah, five Marines is not going to stop this. And even you see the Adept coming in, looking around. He sees the bunker, but he's not going to really engage in anything. He's going to force them into the bunker, but that bunker's a trap. Yeah, and the SCV has seen what's happening. The Adept already getting in position. A gateway was started and then canceled over there by the Stargate. So it looks like that avenue is going to be abandoned. But while this Adept pulls the SCVs, pulls the Marines all towards this bunker, the uh, Stargate's going to open up the Oracle to come um, and, and hit the remaining SCVs that are now rallying back to the mirror from behind. He's got to choose. Does he defend the SCV from the Adepts? Or does he offer them to the uh, the Oracles? Yeah, this is one thing I really like about the strategy is it actually has a lot of paths off here. Now, unfortunately, mm -hmm. this Oracle is getting cycloned away. But you saw, like, he kills a ton of SCVs. He mm -hmm. still has a very fast Nexus. Like, it's not really delayed by that much. I mean, it's a right. little late, obviously, but like it's a pretty fast Nexus. And mm -hmm. if you really have a lot of choices off of this, you can make more Oracles if your original Oracle does a ton of damage, which mm -hmm. I think seven seven SCVs, still denying mining time, just finally getting cleaned up now. Yeah. And, like, I mean, like that's the other thing, is it doesn't seem like much, but shaving off all those Marines early on literally means that Ryung is not going to be able to pressure for a long time. Yeah, it also means going for this fourth purple to pretty much out DPS. Most of the Marines, you can only produce so many Marines there. Yeah, I mean, like, that's the other thing is when you have this many Oracles, mm -hmm. like, look at what's on the ground here for Ryung. He's got, like, what is that? Eight Marines and two Cyclones with ten Marines and two cycl and three Cyclones going to be done by the time all these Oracles would fly in. Yeah. Like, that's just a scary proposition. So, Cyclones are in production, man. I think Ryung's ready to bust out, but the Oracle's coming in a little bit early. Cyclone's trying to get some of the damage. We can, uh, Oracle just taking out one solid health one, and now Ryung's gonna be a little bit weaker as he did lose that one Cyclone. Does have uh, another one in production. Yeah, it's... I, I don't know if that was necessarily worth it for Classic. It kind of depends on what he's planning to do. It looks like he's just going to keep trying to shave away this army when he can, mm -hmm. but you know, that only works up until the Terran has enough army. Well, he took a third base at the goal, so I think he wants to shave it away and just prevent his opponent from moving out on the map. He secures the third base. Yeah, I really like this play. He knows that the Oracles probably can't kill Ryung at this point, but they can right. definitely stop him from killing his own third base. So mm -hmm. why not just take it at the gold? Yeah, it's risky, but I mean, there's no way Ryung's leaving his base for a drop. Like, yeah. you see this, like, you see five Oracles in your base flying over your mineral line. Like, you're kind of reaching the point where a missile turret's going to kill it, or going to well, get killed. He did choose to come out over here and not. Okay, a little bit outward, and we'll see if he can managed to punish this. If not, Ryan might get a little bit greedy and go out even further. It looks like he is going for the add-ons, though, for some depots. This is exactly the right move. Add-ons take ever to rebuild Cam. Yeah, I actually really like doing this. This is another thing I love about this Oracle opening, is, again, you have so many options that you can choose exactly where you want to attack. Mm -hmm. And, like, you just see, like, he's basically cut the production of Ryung in half and stopped it for 50 seconds from that barracks. And really, all that means is a starport and a factory is producing, and that's it. So Ryung choosing to move across the map. He's actually taking with him. What's, what's going on here, Cam? Well, the one problem with this build is that you really don't have a lot of space for stuff. Like, yeah, he does have three pylons, though, so this could be a good overcharge, but he's only got one overcharge. 
Cyclones coming in, trying to avoid the... Slightly does a great job there. He's going building missile to, to knock the Oracles back, but the uh, missile turret's getting sniped quite easily by those stalkers. He's got to be careful to keep the Cyclones in range to push back the stalkers as they move forward. Yeah, this is a pretty actually aggressive and scary push here from Ryum. Dude, this is so sick. Ryung actually really showing how great a player he is. He's got a great concave here, forcing Classic to keep his army very bunched up, and as the turret finishes, it is going to zone out the Oracle. He is actually going to be able to take out this motion for Oh my god! The Oracle's taking a lot of damage from this turret as he moves out, but the Stasis Trap has gone off. Stalker's taking out a lot of damage. Cyclone's here to clean up the Stalkers, though, and that is a lot of Stalkers going down to an infinite amount of you know, Cyclones, or so it appears the Stasis Trap going to knock out the three of those Cyclones and... That's going to give a classic a chance. He is able to clean up the rest of those cyclones. That was the clutchest stasis ward I have ever seen, Camaro. Yeah, like that basically bought him all the time he needed. Like three cyclones was basically autonomous cyclones. And as you see, Ryung tapping out GG. Classic taking game number three. Beautiful proxy oracle to start it. And then just a great transition into using just sort of a... Like, he had a ton of pylons, he bought himself time with those stasis wards, which... I mean, like, it's something people forget, is like... Yeah, the oracles shoot death beams, but they also still have stasis, and I'm really glad, because this was an ability at the beginning of Legacy of the Void, we didn't see a lot. Mm -hmm. But now that Legacy of the Void has been around for a while, we're starting to see Protoss players really abuse these stasis wards. Mm -hmm. Because, again, they're so good on defense, because there's no way a Terran player is going to have scans, especially when you've knocked them down economically so much, and even then... Focusing stasis wards is hard. They're one unit. They're one by one. Yeah, dude. These games have been so close. Like, I legit thought... And then that one stasis ward, man. These are some of the best games. Oh, my God. These guys are so closely matched. Way more so than I expected. Yeah, I... I've got to be honest. Again, I really thought Ryung was going to kind of get beat a little more... Mm -hmm. Not even convincingly, but like you just see, he's just playing so well. Even landing the Vikings in that fight because all mm -hmm. he knew he had to take out was the Stalkers. Because the Oracles were out of energy, they really can't do a whole lot. But again, that Stasis mm -hmm. Ward trapping literally three of the four Cyclones. And right. one Cyclone and two Vikings does not an army make. Dude, that was amazing play. As most of you guys know, we donate $75 of our first to the prize pool of each event. We're able to do that thanks to the kind people on Patreon who keep our mission afloat. If you want to learn about rewards on Patreon, please visit the link in chat. You can get an opportunity to hang out in our private Polygon members only Skype chats. You might even get a chance to cast with me or be coached by one of Polygon Gaming's finest. You guys can check that out. Meanwhile, we're going to be setting up the next games. See you in a moment. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.